Lord, I thank you. You told me to not be anxious for anything, to but to pray about everything uh, with a thankful heart. So I'm just thankful that we have another Monday to spend with you. We have another Monday to lift you up, to honor you with our words, to honor you with our actions, Father God. I thank you so much for every lady that is on here, for every woman whose heart is open towards you, Father God. I just pray right now that you will break down the callous of our heart, Lord, that, you know, our hearts won't be hardened to your word, that we will receive your word. We will hear your word, receive your word, practice your word, put it into action, put it into practice, Lord, and that it will make us stronger. I pray for our strength right now because Life brings all kind of ups and downs, Father God, but when we have you, it's a lot easier to get through our days. So I pray that we can see you in this moment, Father God. I pray that you're speaking directly through me, Holy Spirit, so that I'm not using any of my words, but all of your words. Um, I thank you so much. I honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, um... I don't know if you've heard the scripture before, but I've heard it. And uh, and just a little backstory of this scripture. If you go to Matthew 5, you don't have to turn there. But if you go to Matthew 5, Matthew 5, Jesus is teaching. He is on, he is on the, he's giving a sermon on the mount, if you will. And he's teaching about what he wants to implement what he wants you to implement in your life like jesus is contradicting what the world says which means what the world has taught us concerning the examples that he's giving us matthew 5 all the way to matthew 7 what they have taught us is wrong compared to what Jesus is teaching us because we know that he is the truth, that he is the only truth. So he's saying, I know that the world said this, but I'm saying this. I know that the world says, you know, love your, I mean, hate your enemies, but love your friends and things like that. But he's saying, no, pray for your enemies, you know, and, and love those who persecute you. So it's always the opposite of what the world is saying. Jesus is contradicting what they're saying. So in all of this, before he gets to this one particular teaching in verse 24, he teaches about the Beatitudes. He teaches about us being the salt of the earth. He teaches about adultery and he teaches about divorce and love for our enemies and giving uh, to those who are the needy and, and prayer and anxiety and heaven treasures and judging and um, asking and receiving and true and false prophets and many, many more. Like he teaches about these things because these things are so important for your walk of life with him. Um, it says in the word that, you know, that we have become a new, that, that we have become new in Christ so that our old life has passed away, but this new life that is in Christ, it is now beginning to live. You know, so these teachings are once you begin to follow Jesus, once you have a, a established this connection, this relationship with him, he's giving you teachings, Matthew 5, all the way through Matthew 7, particular teachings for your life to put into practice and to live by their they're almost like commands. They are pretty much commands, but he's it's like he's giving you the answers to the test before you even have to take the test. So um, many of us probably want to know, excuse me, like when we are stepping into this relationship with Christ, you know, and it's like, God, you know, what is your will for me? You know, most maybe Christians make it seem like there's something specific that only pertains to them, you, you know, like, okay, well, he said that this is my will. I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do that. But in fact, 
he has this specific will for us and it's listed in Matthew 5 through Matthew 7, two, two pages, if you will, two chapters, if you will. And, and it's his will for our life. So it's like if you don't know exactly what that will is, if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, if you don't know how you are supposed to live as a Christian, if you don't know how you are supposed to live as a follower of Christ, he's giving you examples and he's giving you um, promises attached to these examples based off of like, look, if you do this, this, like, you know, like if you, which we'll get into it in verse 24, but God is just giving us these teachings. Jesus, in fact, is teaching his disciples. So Jesus is the one giving us these teachings so that we can know exactly what to live by. We don't need to second guess what does God want us to do? How does he want us to carry out his will? We don't need to second guess it. We don't need to doubt it. We need to know it. And that's what he teaches us before we get into verse 24. It's actually 20 sermons, including this one, verse 24 through 24 through 27 that Jesus taught about so that we can live a life according to his will. There's 20 of them. So um, we won't get into all of it tonight, but verse 24 starts off and it says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, the teachings that he was given previous scriptures and chapters before and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. So I want to stop there before I get in verse 26 because I want to talk about what it means to be wise, what it means to build, what it means to practice, um, what he's asking us to do. So, because I don't have much notes, the Holy Spirit is definitely going to need to come through for me on this one. So, um, Jesus is asking us, he's making a he's making a demand on our wisdom like he is calling us to be wise there is a difference between worldly living and spiritual living so that is what he needed his disciples to know disciples are just those who follow christ those who are students of jesus and he was asking them and really telling them to be wise. Like, because of the weight I'm going to put on you, I need you to be wise about pretty much your everyday. Like, every day is a chance for God to get the glory out of your life. We're all not here by surprise. We're all here for a reason. We're here to do the will of God, not our own will. And he talks about that. So we're here to do his will. We're here to love our enemies. We're here to not judge others. We're here to not commit adultery. We're here to think of others as better as we think of ourselves. We're here. That is his will for us. Again, we don't need to know or, or we don't need to question, well, what is God's will for me? What does he want me to do? What do I bring to the earth? Why am I here? Why am I created? These are questions that he's already answered in Matthew 5 through Matthew 7 and mostly the, the Bible, but for these for this purpose only, Matthew 5 through Matthew 7, he has a specific will for us that we must follow, but not only must we follow them, we have to put it into practice. So putting something into practice doesn't mean the first time we do it, we're going to get it right. When we put something into practice, we have to, we have to go slow in the beginning. 
because we don't know what we're getting ourselves into. We don't know exactly how this works, but because God wants to build such a weight and, and place such a weight on you, you must be building on his foundation. Him, he's our firm foundation. He is the one that gets us to not be shaken nor moved. He is the one that will fight our battles. He is the one that will protect us from harm's way. Yeah, it may sound cliche to some people. Well, how would God protect you when I had to go through this or I had to go through that? We have to keep in perspective that we have consequences on everything that we do. And if we do not go through things in this world, if we do not go through things on our every day, how are you becoming strengthened? You cannot be strengthened if you don't go through anything. If you don't go through life experiences, he cannot strengthen you. So you must go through life experiences. So he's calling us to be wise. He said, whoever hears these words, let's go off of, let's stay right there on hears these words. God wants to get your attention, first of all. He wants to get your attention. Like, he wants you to be concentrated on him. Because once you're concentrated on him, once your focus is on him, and all the other outside influences become at a minimum, he has your attention. So he wants your attention to be able for you to even look at Matthew 5 through 7 and really hear him. In order, for, in order for us to hear anybody, they have to have our attention. So he wants our attention. He wants our spirit to be willing. He wants everything that we, he wants us to know that everything that we have done outside of him. And we realize that those things haven't worked. He's saying, okay, now I have your attention because you're willing to try something new. You're willing to try something different. You're willing to try something that is basically going to be permanent instead of temporary. We talk a lot about that, the permanent things and the temporary things. So God is a permanent solution. Everything else that the world gives is temporary. So at the end of the day, once he has your attention, once he has your focus and everything else is cleared out, he can now get you to put into practice the things that he is saying to you. So he has your attention. He's saying, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, he wants you to be doer, a, a doer. In his word, not in Matthew, or it may be in Matthew. I'm not really good with scripture. I just, I just know some of it, but... He said he doesn't just want us to be hearers of the word. He wants us to be doers of the word. And he's summing all of that up, but he's breaking it down in this particular scripture. So in this particular scripture, he's saying everyone with ears to he everyone who hears the words of mine puts them into practice. Everyone who hears and does putting something into practice means I'm doing something. I'm putting it. I'm putting it into action. Practice is repeating things all the time, continuing to pursue it. It's an actual performance or application that you are using every single day to build strength, to build stamina, to build stability. So every day you have to put these tools that he is giving you into practice because what comes out on the other end is strength. Like when you're in the gym, it's all, that's always the easiest contrast you don't just see your you don't just see your 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 the way that you're gonna be on the first time you go and work out it takes practice to continue to lift those weights to continue to run on the treadmill to see the fat burning to continue to do the squat so you can see the bum growing like it takes practice it doesn't just come you know one week you go one week you don't go, one month you go a full month, the next three months you don't go. Like it has to be a continued practice so that you'll be able to see results. Once you see results, I mean, once you put something into practice, you'll see results. 
putting those things into practice and you're seeing those results means that you're seeing the strength attached to those results. Results, excuse me. You see the results, you see the strength, you feel the strength because now you're lifting more on your legs. You went from lifting a weight of 40 to now lifting a weight of 60. You went to, from lifting a weight of 60 to now lifting a weight of 90. So you see that the strength is building, but until you continue to put that weight on your legs, you won't never grow to the next level. So he wants us to be hearers and doers of his word. So puts them into practice. Is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So let's get into that. Um, in this life, this new life in Christ that we either have, don't have, or are going to have brings a plethora of things that Jesus already knows will go through, that Jesus already knows we will go through and experience. So, Seasons and times will go through seasons of times of weakness. We'll go through seasons of times of, of heartbreak, peace, persecution, and insults. And if we do not go through those things, and, and there's more, if we do not go through those things, we do not become strengthened in those areas. God uses the weakness or the heartbreak or the persecution he uses those things as tools because he needs those things to build you we can see those things as negative but if we change our perspective or let god change our perspective we'll see the positive in the heartbreak We'll see the positive in the persecution. We'll see the positive in the insults or the weakness. We'll see the positive because just like, just like rain, rain can, and, and he talks about, you know, the, the rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house. When we talk about rain, rain can produce, you know, crops. It can make things grow or it can cause damage. Streams can drag people away. Winds can cause disasters. But those things are also good. We need wind. We need to be able to breathe. We need streams because streams also help our environment. Streams also help plants grow. Streams also allows water to get from one place to another. So we need all of these natural things, but these natural things can also cause damage or disasters. But because if our perspective chain changes, we'll see these things as the way God needs us to see them, not the way the world needs us to see them. He uses these things as tools to be able to build on us and strengthen us because of the weight that he will put on us. So there's good in all of these natural things. So. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. So, building our life on Jesus means we have a guarantee. The walk with Jesus comes at a cost. It comes at a sacrifice. It's, it's a cost of following Jesus, which means if you're following Jesus, it doesn't mean that your life is just going to be... You know, I have Jesus and then I'm not going to go through. I have Jesus and I'm not going to experience pain. I have Jesus, but I'm not going to, you know, sin. Like it doesn't mean any of that. It just means that you have a guarantee to get into heaven. It means that you have a guarantee that your life will be better with him than without him. You have a guarantee, a solid guarantee. The walk comes with the cost. We'll go through life tearing us down. We'll go through things getting us hard. But if we continue to allow God 
to build us on this firm foundation. He is our firm foundation. Nothing can shake us. Nothing can tear us down. Yes, it's going to get hard. Yes, it's going to get lonely. Yes, it's going to get um, harder, if you will. Life is going to happen. It doesn't mean that we just have the okay to uh, let all of these things affect us. All of these things will cause a reaction in our life. But because he's had, he has examples here to teach us how to live, to teach us how to be when these things arise, he's saying that this is what happens when you put them into practice. You will, all of these things are going to come. All of these storms, all of this rain, all of this damage, all of this destruction, all of the, all of this is going to come. That's a part of your life. All of this is natural. All of this is what I've called into existence. All of these things are going to happen. But if you build your life on me, none of these things will affect you. None of these things will tear you down. None of these things will make you stop following me. None of these things will make you stop praying. None of these things will make you stop doing the things that I've asked you to do because you're building your life on a firm foundation. God, he, Jesus, he is our firm foundation because we know that life is going to bring all of these things, right? Pain and heartbreak and, you know, um, people against you and drama, pettiness, doubt, like all of these things, we know that life is going to bring them. But at the end of the day, if we have Jesus on our side, they won't be as bad as we think they are if we change our perspective. So we have to build our life on Jesus. He is the firm foundation. He is our guarantee. Just because we're going to go through things, it doesn't mean that we get to stop following and doing what he has asked us to do. When you're building something, you're making it stronger. So don't get upset or don't get, um, don't get weary, if you will. When you go through things that looks opposite of what you think your walk is supposed to look like with Jesus. You think your walk is supposed to look smooth. Maybe you think your, you know, you your walk with Jesus is supposed to not have hard times. You don't fall on hard times. You don't, you know, be tempted to sin. Like it's it's not any of that. But in fact, it's all of that because if you don't go through all of that, you don't become stronger in any of these areas. You have to continue to be tempted. You have to continue to go through hard times. You have to continue because all of that leads to testimony. If you don't have hard times, how are you going to tell the next person who wants to believe or who is seeking God? How are you going to tell them anything if you can't relate to them? If you can't relate to them, they're probably going to, you know, maybe find it elsewhere. But if God is leading somebody to you, that means you are the one who is able to connect with them. You are the one who is able to share your testimony so that they can believe. But if you've never been through anything and you always look at your situations as negative and you don't change your perspective to the God perspective, then you can't help anybody else. That means the winds are taking over. That means the rains are, are, are damaging your life. Like you're supposed to be able to withstand all of these things. That's what makes... Um, the one who is wise different from the one who is foolish. The one who is foolish, it says, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So if God is trying to put some heavy things on you, and he's trying to build you, you have to be able to withstand the weight that he is placing on you. When you're building something on a firm foundation, the foundation is the support, right? 
the foundation is what supports everything that's going to be if, if they're if the contractors or, or who the builders are are building a house they first need a foundation everything up under what they are about to lay has to come up it has to be removed they have to do some things underground like that's what god does in us he does all of these things underground that maybe most people can't see, but you can feel. You can feel God working in your life. You can feel yourself changing. You can feel your perspective changing. You can feel your mind shifting and changing. Just because people think that you're the same, it doesn't mean that you're the same. You know what God is doing in your life, but at the end of the day, people are always going to have things to say. So they, oh, you haven't changed. Oh, you're still the same as you were when you were 20 or 16 or whatever the case is. But God has to do a lot of work underneath before he lays the foundation because the foundation is solid. The foundation can't be moved. So at the end of the day, everything that he is doing in your life before he sets the foundation is very critical. You're going through that same thing over and over and over because he's doing something in your life. You're changing from one perspective to the next because he's doing something in your life. Your mindset is changing. The way that you show up for people is changing. The way that you respond to people is changing because he's doing something in your life. So that foundation, he needs that foundation there because he needs to be able to support what he's about to put on it. So a house can't just be built on sand because there is no support. Sand is shaking. So when he's talking about building a house on rock, rock is firm. Especially when we're talking about him, he is firm. He is not something that can be shaken. He is not something that you should be movable like, oh, do you believe or do you not believe? Do you know what you're supposed to do? Do you not know what you're supposed to do? Are you supposed to, you know, talk about people? Are you not supposed to talk about people? Like it's not supposed to be something that's movable because you're building your house on a rock. So that's what he is speaking to. He is saying, I'm going to lay this foundation and it's going to be firm because everything that I'm about to put on it is going to be heavy, right? The foundation is the least heaviest thing. You got wood and you got steel and you got paint and you got like you got all of these things that make up something heavier than the foundation. So he knows everything that he is about to place on you. But if you don't go through things and, and you're shaken by everything, you're always moved every which away then that's not a firm foundation. He has, he still has some things that he's doing underneath you. Before he lays that foundation, he wants to make sure those things underneath you are taken out. Those things underneath you are, are, are being worked on and worked out. He wants that firm foundation there so you won't be able to be shaken by the things that he is about to place in your life. Just like heartbreak or just like you know i don't know just like things that happen on a regular day basis you can look at one thing as like me driving my kids all the way to school back to colton and i live in eastville i can look at that as something to complain about or i can look at that as god is building patience in my spirit, right? Because that's the fruit of the spirit. I can look at it from the world's point of view, or I can look at it from God's perspective and say, okay, God, this is a tool that you're using to build patience. So if you're not going through the natural things and you're not using the perspective of God, you'll be so easily swayed by the world's perspective. I could have been so easily, so in the beginning I was like, oh, I got to drive all the way here, back and forth, the traffic, until, until that started getting strengthened in me. And I'm like, oh, God, you're building patience. God, you're building self-control or, you know, it's just like, but you got to go through it to see it. You're not getting any stronger if you continue to go through the easy things. 
If you continue to lift a weight that is 20 and you're getting stronger, but you're still lifting a weight that's 20, you're not really putting pressure on yourself. God is going to put pressure on you because the pressure will bring out something in you that you didn't even think that you had. He wants to put pressure on you. He wants to continue to build on you. He wants you. He wants to continue to place the weight on you because he's the one who knows what you can handle. We think that what we go through is too much for us to handle. This is too much. It's always one thing or another. We think it's heavier than what God is thinking. But it's not because if he's putting something in your life, if he's placing something on you, that means you're able to handle it. But sometimes we don't use that perspective. So you're probably wondering why like all these things are happening to you, but it's because God is building you. If you look back just at your life right now, just look at your situation. And you may think that your situation is a negative situation. What are some positive things in your situation right now about your situation? Like we can use the famous like, oh, well, I'm still living. You know, that's still positive, though. That's still a gift. That's still a blessing. You know, so don't take for granted the tools that God is using just because you don't think that he would use that particular tool, if that makes sense. Like just because, and I don't really know my tools that well, but say like a monkey wrench. Say you, you need like an Allen key, but God uses a monkey wrench instead to get the job done. You're thinking that you need the Allen key to get the job done, but God is saying, well, I'm going to use a monkey wrench. So don't think that your situation is like can't be fixed. Don't think that your situation is not a tool that God is using. He uses everything in your life as a tool to, to get you to where he needs you to be. You must endure hardship. You must endure pain. I know, you know, walking with Jesus, it, it, it should seem better than what it is. But it's hard. It's hard to walk with Jesus. And it's like, well, I might as well just not walk with him because life is hard as it is. But in fact, it's hard, but it's easier than if you're not walking with him. You know, and... um. It, yeah, it's easier if you're, if, if you're walking with him than when you're not walking with him. But the fact is, as I'm looking at this, rain and streams and winds, they can all cause damage, right? Too much of all of this can cause damage. So if you have too much of something going on in your life, it can cause you more damage than good if you don't have Jesus backing you and supporting you. He's the firm foundation. He's the support. So if all of these things are happening in your life, all of your life choices, all of somebody else's life choices that now have become your or, or, or part of your life, should I say, if you do not have Jesus supporting you, then it says you will fall with the great crash, your house that you're trying to build. We know that we're going to fall short, but I would rather fall short with God than fall short without him, right? So we need to put these things into practice. If you have time, like sometime this week, maybe before Monday, or just really at your own pace, I would read Matthew 7 and then, you know, come all the way. I mean, Matthew 5, excuse me, starting at the, uh, starting at the Beatitudes. I think that's Matthew 5, 1 verses, uh, Go to Matthew 5, 1, and then go all the way to Matthew 7. You can reread, um, you can re reread this particular scripture. 
but I would read all of that because that's like the main thing here. Like the main thing here is him teaching you how to live a Christ-like life, right? And he's teaching you that all of these things will come at you, but he's the one who supports you. He's the one that allows you to not be shaken when things come your way. Again, a lot of things can come our way. The things that we don't want to happen, the things that we didn't take account for and we didn't realize were going to happen, but they are happening. It's a lot of that. The things that we don't even expect, but it did happen or it does happen. You know, he's saying like, don't worry about anything that happens in your life. I know it's easier said than done. It's hard to not worry about the little things or the big things that are playing a part in your life. It's hard to do all of that, not recognize it, not focus on it, not worry about it. That part is hard. But he, if you see it from his perspective, you are allowing him to change what you see as a negative into a positive so that you're not, you know, moved every which way when things come your way, when things that you didn't account for comes your way, you know, and I wish I could say all of this, you know, how I'm, I'm really feeling it, but I can't even really put it in the words. It's like this teaching going from Matthew 5. It's like it's really giving us like this blueprint of how he wants us to live. And and we know and we'll know his will for our life. That we are not second guessing his will, but that we are being better people better women when we are applying his will to our life when we are putting these things into practice every single day practice means every single day that we are doing these things every single day that we are applying them to our life every single day you know and applying these things clearly makes us wise if we're not applying these things, but we're just on here listening to the word, then we're foolish at the end of the day. Like we can all listen to something, you know, but if we're not taking it and, and, and putting it into action, then what are we really doing? Like I can sit there and cut the watermelon, but if I'm not going to eat it, then what was the point of cutting it? Like we have to put these things into action. We really have to stop hearing the things that God is telling us to do and the things that he's commanding us and the things that he needs us to be obedient about. We have to stop just hearing those things and we have to start doing those things so that we become wise. That's why he have all of these teachings for us to live by. It's not so we can read them and just go about our life. It's there because he's trying to build something on you. He's trying to place something on you, but you're not going to be able to withstand it if you don't apply the teachings. God wants to give us so much and do and, and, and do so much in and through our lives. But if you're not going to put the teachings into practice, then he can't, he's not going to give you more than you can bear. So if you can't even bear the things that you go through on a day-to-day -day basis, he's not going to put more on you. He wants you to be able to withstand things that come your way. That's why he gave us the teachings. Anything that comes your way, he says, see it as an opportunity for joy. Because that builds your faith. And that builds perseverance. You know, it's just like, oh, I wish I can just say all of this a lot more than 
what I'm doing, but it's just like this. Um, it's not for nothing. Like these teachings are not for nothing. It's 20 of them. And it's just, they're just not for nothing. He, I mean, they're just not for nothing. So, I mean, everyone with ears to hear, we got to put it into practice. We can all hear very clearly. But it's going to be on us. We're going to be the foolish ones if we keep listening to what God is telling us to do and taking no action. Like we're not on here every Monday or you probably don't go to church on Sundays or, you know, read your word and stuff like that for nothing. Like we have to put these things into practice so that we can build, be wise and we can withstand the weight that he is putting on us. Everything doesn't just happen just because, you know, everything is just for a reason. Everything. The same things that you look at as negative are the same things that God is using to grow you, to strengthen you, to give you wisdom, to give you a different perspective. Like it's the same things that he's using. So I know this was a very short message, but I, I pray that he actually gives me this one next week again, because I feel like it's just so much in this one little scripture that probably didn't come out but then I got to believe that it did, right? Because, I mean, it's so much in this one scripture that it's like, I don't know how much simpler, because he's saying it. And maybe that's the thing. Like, he's already saying it. Like, if you go back and read on your own time, Matthew 5 all the way to Matthew 7, it's simple, it's like maybe there is no teaching attached to it, but maybe that is the assignment for us to go back and read Matthew 5 through 7 because we are to live a Christ-like life. We are to walk like Christ. There is no in-between. Either you're going to walk with him or, or you're not. Either you're going to be obedient and follow the teachings or you're not. Either you're going to be wise or you're going to be foolish. Like it's always one or the other. He is a God of one or the other. You choose. He gives us opportunities to choose. Either you're going to be an adulterer or you're going to be honorable to your husband or your wife. Either you're going to judge people and, and receive the same measure that you're judging back to so, someone back to you. Or you're not going to judge someone and you're going to uplift them. Either you're going to be the salt of, on, of the earth or you're going to lose your saltiness. Either you're going to be the light of the world or you're going to be in darkness. Like it's one or the other. He's giving us a choice in all of these 20 teachings that he gives, sermons. He's giving us a choice of one or the other. All of these things, to be able to put these things into practice, it's going to take work. Practice is not easy. Practice doesn't come over. I mean, practice and, and getting it doesn't come overnight. We're never just going to get it until he finally returns. Like we're always going to have to practice our whole life. We're always going to have to practice. So we might as well start now putting these things into practice. Otherwise, we're going to be foolish. Otherwise, everything is always going to get us down. Otherwise, everything is always going to uh, affect us. What somebody says about us, it's going to affect us. The way somebody treats us, it's going to affect us. What somebody says about God in our presence, it's going to affect us. But if we know that we have Jesus and he's our firm foundation and he is our support, Things should not affect us. If Jesus had let the people affect him, then he probably wouldn't have died on the cross for us. If he would have let the whips affect him, if he would have let the cup that he had to bear affect him, he probably wouldn't have went and did the sacrifice. If we're going to let things affect us, we're probably not going to make the sacrifice to follow him. It's a sacrifice to follow him. People are going to say whatever, you're going to feel whatever, you're not always going to feel at your best, you're probably going to feel low sometimes, but you just pray and, you know, it's just like, at the end of the day, he doesn't want the little things to affect us. He doesn't want the things of life, like, imagine just, I mean, 
from you being young to however old you are now. Going through the same things over and over, letting the same things affect you. Letting the same things take a toll on you. It's just, he doesn't want that. He wants you to grow. He wants you to mature. But sometimes we cannot do that if we don't have a firm foundation to build on. So I think he's saying it. And that's why I feel like I'm not teaching it because he's the ultimate teacher at the end of the day. He's saying it like it's very simple. It's black and white. It's either or. And that's why I can't teach this subject because he's teaching it in Matthew 5. Who's a better teacher than him? Who can give a better sermon than him? Who can pierce somebody's heart the way he can? Only he can do it. So at the end of the day, I can try to teach this and the Holy Spirit is speaking through me, but you're not going to get it unless you read it for yourself. You're not going to get it just by Brianna speaking to you because that's just being a hearer. But you're not going to get it unless you do it. You're not going to get it unless you put it into practice. You're not going to live it unless you practice it. We got to live this thing for real. I've said that since the beginning of this ministry. We got to live this thing for real. And living this thing for real don't come with excuses. It just don't. Like either you're wise or you're foolish. There is no excuse. This is his will for our life. Either you accept the will or you deny the will. Everything from Matthew 5 to 7 is an either or. I can break them down just a little bit since we got a little bit more time. I think I had already did it. But either you're the salt and the light or you're not. Either you fulfill the law or you don't fulfill. Either you murder or you don't murder. Murder. Either you commit adultery or you don't commit adultery. Either you divorce or you don't divorce. Either you take an oath or you don't take an oath. Either there's you love your enemies or you don't love your enemies. Either you give to the needy or you don't give to the needy. Either you pray or you don't pray. Either you fast or you don't fast. And I'm not going to go through all of them because that's just a bit much. But all I'm saying is it's an either or. It's an either or. I can't preach this subject. I have to live the subject. And not even a subject, but a teaching. You know what I mean? Like, I cannot, like, I have to live this. Like, this is not teachable because he's already taught it. You got to want to sit and listen and, and be a student if, if that's what you choose. Like, I'm trying to live this. We should all be trying to live this. Like, that's how God continues to use us. We can stay stagnant if we want. We can stay foolish if we want. We can stay making excuses if we want. But we are held accountable for the things that we do and the things that we know. He said that it is a sin to do something that you know to do, but you don't do. Like... As hard as this is, we got to put these things into practice. And that's why it's better for you to go back and read Matthew 5 all the way to Matthew 7. It's, it's better for you. Like, I can't, like, I surrender this one. Like, I can't even, even teach this, if you will. Because it's something that comes when you read it yourself and when you... And when you do it, all I can say is what I've already said, you know, ab about him being our firm foundation, him try him going to put a weight on you. That if you don't trust him, you would think that he's not supporting the things that he's placing in your life. We have to trust him and know that everything in our life is happening for our good. He has plans for our good. It says in his word, plans to prosper us, plans to give us a hope in the future, not plans to harm us. So if we know that we should trust him and know that, God, you support us in our life. You support the things that happen in our life. So if we know that you support us, we should know that anything that comes our way, we don't have to be moved by it. 
because there's going to be a lot of things and probably plenty of things that has already transpired, but there's a lot of things that are going to come your way that you have to be able to withstand. Like there are callings on each and every one of us outside of, not outside of his will, but outside of what we're talking about, about his will. There is a calling on each and every one of our names. Whether you're going to be evangelist, whether you're going to prophesy, whether you're going to teach, whether you're going to preach, whether you're going to evangelize, whether you're going to go out and, and heal, whether you're going to go out and cast out demons, whether you're going to go out and allow God to use you as miracle. Like there, there are callings on your name, but he cannot put the calling in you fully, if you will. It has to be cultivated. Like the seed that he already gave you was already there. Whatever you are supposed to be, it's already there. But it has to be watered. So that you can do what he's called you to do. We're all supposed to be doing something for his glory, for him, for his honor, for his kingdom. We're supposed to be doing something for the body of Christ. We're supposed to be doing something. I don't know what everybody's calling is. I do know what our what the will of God is, but I don't know everybody's calling because we're not all called to do the same thing. But if in fact, you know that you have a calling on your life, don't be mad at the weight that God puts on your shoulders because that weight is only a tool used to get you to where you need to be. So don't be mad at that tool. Don't be mad at that weight. God is gonna, um, God is gonna support you, you know, and um, yeah, he's gonna support you. So I pray that y'all, you know, um, go back. I know I'm gonna go back this week to read Matthew five through seven. And then read that one again, the one that we taught on tonight. Read that one again because it sums it all up. That's why he was saying, anyone with ears, if you hear this teaching, you need to do it pretty much. So it was 20 teachings, 19 besides that one. 19 teachings previously, previous. And all of those teachings are to be applied to our life so we that we can pro practice our continued walk with God. So I pray that that will be something that you are willing to do. Because um, this is Bible study. So maybe that's just our homework for tonight. Um, I, I pray that you are willing to do that. Because again, I, I can't teach on that. He's already taught it. So maybe that's just the homework again um, that we need to do. If you are willing to do it and then maybe we come back next Monday. I don't know what he's going to do, but maybe we come back next Monday and talk about it. I don't know. But um but yeah. Um did anybody have anything that they want to say or add or you know how we usually do anybody before we close out tonight was a good night. It was quick. If not, we can pray, we can close out, and we can be back next Monday. No? Okay. So thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. Thank you, Lord, that you are the ultimate teacher. No one can teach like you. No one can give a sermon how you can, Lord. I just thank you so much that your word still doesn't return to you void. I thank you, uh, Lord, that your scripture, your word brings us life. It brings us light in the midst of any dark situations. I pray, Lord, that you will speak to us in private, that you will speak to us in secret, you know, um, about what you want us to do. I thank you for the will that you have made so simply plainly like I, I thank you so much for your will i pray right now that you give us the strength lord to be obedient to your will i pray that we put these things into practice father god i pray that 
this will only make our light shine brighter. I pray that we will live this life with you for real. We know that it's a sacrifice. We know that it gets hard. We know that it gets troublesome sometimes, Father God. We know that there's heartbreak. There's all kind of things. But Lord, you said that you are close to the brokenhearted. You know, and I just thank you right now for all of this revelation. I thank you for all of this wisdom. I thank you for your strength. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your authority, Father God. And I just pray that we will be obedient and that we will walk out this life no matter how hard it is. We will just know that you are with us every step of the way, that we will see the negatives as positive, Father God. We won't look at it from the worldly perspective, but the but the God perspective, Lord, change our hearts, change our minds. Father, thank you for cultivating things inside of us so that you can put weight on us, God. It's like you calling us deeper and deeper, Lord. So I just thank you right now for where you are calling us, what you are calling us to, and what you want to do with us in the world. Um, I just pray that we are open vessels, that, um, that we surrender to your will, not our will, but yours be done. In Jesus' name, amen.